on everyone so the lakers got absolutely manhandled in yesterday's game against the philadelphia 76ers now in most cases i would just rule this out as an outlier right team shot insanely hot couldn't miss we're just hitting everything uh, but the problem is this is becoming a common occurrence with the lakers now obviously they have guys missing and i do believe that that is part of the issue it's beyond that right even with the lack of guys uh, available, you still have a lack of energy, a lack of effort, right? Guys not really putting in the, the work on the basketball court that we need them to put on, the lack of consistency. I mean, nobody's consistent outside of like LeBron James and Anthony Davis for the most part this year. A lot of it has been that the Lakers just completely, you know, ice him out at, throughout the course of the game. I mean, how many times is AD like, just open or established position, and guys just completely overlook him. Uh, part of that is AD's fault because he needs to be more aggressive, needs to be more demanding of the basketball. But this is top to bottom a just not good team at the moment, right? They're better than the bad teams. They're better than like the the average team, but they're not a contending level team. They could get there, and I do believe that they will get there at some point. Um, and you could even make the argument that once they get to the playoffs, this team would be better because you have guys that elevate in the playoffs. You know, Rui Hachimura has shown that, Austin Reeves. Obviously, we know what LeBron can do in the playoffs, especially if he's healthy. Um, you know, Gabe Vincent is a guy that really elevates his game for the playoff time, Torian Prince. But the lack of consistency is a problem. You know, a lot of people want to put it solely on Darvin Ham. This isn't solely a coaching issue. You could change the coach right now. You could go get prime Phil Jackson. It means nothing if guys don't show up with effort, don't hit open shots, don't do the things that they're supposed to do, lock down defensively, all of those things. We see the Lakers, just even through the course of games, just be incredibly consistently inconsistent. And it's just maddening. Now, that doesn't mean Darvin Ham doesn't have a part to play in this. Absolutely, he has a part to play in this. But this is a team issue. This isn't just on an individual or an individual player or an individual coach or anything like that. I do think once we get our guys back that have been injured, because they're all our defensive guys, talk about three of our four top defensive guys, I think that that will help. Especially with like Jared Vanderbilt and Cam Reddish. Like those are two guys you don't have to worry about their effort. You don't have to worry about their energy. They're going to give it and bring it night in and night out. And have been fantastic uh, as far as providing the defensive side of the ball. So definitely think the Lakers will be better when they come back. I also think those two guys will help more on the offensive side. I know a lot of people have questions about that. But it's not so much about hitting shots. Obviously that would be nice. But Jared Vanderbilt, right, when he returns... He's a seven rebound a game guy. So if he continues that, that means that's rebounds both offensively and defensively that are going to lead to more opportunities for the Lakers rather than teams getting second chance points. It's going to limit it. Uh, Jared Vanderbilt getting steals and getting stops, right? Leads to transition, which leads to more opportunities and better scoring and higher offensive output, right? Once we get Jared Vanderbilt, he's going to have an impact. He's not the cure-all, fix-all. Neither is when we get everybody, but it's the collectiveness of everybody, and we can start finding our identity. The problem still lies, and the reason why I think the Lakers desperately need a trade still is they don't have anybody that is consistent. Consistent, right? Like, look, D'Lo on any given night can be fantastic. Reeves on any given night can be fantastic. Uh, you know, you have guys that'll step up, like, Wood has had a great game. Uh, Prince has had, you know, an 18 in a, in a 20 point game. Uh, Rui Achimura has had big games. You have guys that on any given night can have a big game, but you don't have that consistency from your main pieces night in and out. I love the depth. I think we still have one of the deepest teams in the league. I think we have one of the deepest rosters in the league, but we don't have that third guy. Reeves has not been that. D'Lo has not been that. We need to get that guy, whether that's a DeMar DeRozan, a Zach Levine, or somebody else. Because if we get that third guy and we still maintain a lot of our depth, which we would, right? Especially if we trade for DeMar DeRozan. DeMar DeRozan is only making $28 million. So we could trade basically two guys to go get DeMar DeRozan, and we'd still be 10 to 12 guys deep. We'd be fine.
Same thing with Zach Levine. You'd have to trade like three guys, but still, you get Zach Levine, and we'd still be, you know, nine guys deep. The depth is great when you have the players that can, on a regular basis, carry the load, right? If we get a guy like a DeMar DeRozan, get a guy like Zach Levine, then that puts everybody back to their normal spots, right? So let's say we trade, you know, D'Lo and Rui, whatever, right? Again, just using them as an example. Let's say we get one of these two guys, right? Now, what that means is you have the pecking order. So LeBron doesn't have to handle the offensive workload as much. Neither does AD. You have DeMar or Levine come in, and they can be the primary scoring option. Right, LeBron's still going to go get his 20 whenever he feels like it, so I'm not worried about him getting 20 to 25. AD will get opened up even more because now teams won't be able to double-team him all game long because that's the thing. Like Teams are just living with the Lakers shooting shots and making other guys beat them. The way they're looking at it is we'll double-team AD, we'll keep AD honest and not allow him to go off, and then that means that all we have to do is kind of keep an eye on LeBron but LeBron's not going to go and go off for 50 anymore because he can't. I mean, he can on the occasional night, but we'll take the chance that he's not going to do that tonight because he's 38, about to be 39. So let's make Reeves or D'Lo or somebody else beat us, and we don't have that guy that can't. DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine can. Both of those guys can go off for 50, right? You can't just keep them on an island and and go one on one because if they if you do, they're going to kill you. Right, they're gonna torch you, which then now you you have to come and actually properly defend. So now the defense schemes look completely different, and now Anthony Davis gets more opportunity, and LeBron gets better lanes, and all. it just everything gets flowing. And now you have better consistency scoring. So those games that LeBron just doesn't have it, or those games that AD just doesn't have it. Well, now you have that guy that can give it to you and provide that. Right, like obviously if everyone's having a bad night, everyone's having a bad night, but I don't think it'll be an outlier. The biggest concern and a real reason a lot of people are hesitant about that like third guy is because of the Westbrook debacle where we basically had no depth. That wouldn't be the same case here. The Lakers could trade for either of these two and still have plenty of depth. And once you get to the playoffs, you're only running like eight guys anyway. So the Lakers would be fine, but they don't have that consistent go-to guy. They don't have that guy that on a nightly basis, you know, even on a bad night, are going to give you probably 15 to 20, right? Like, uh, Zach Levine can be pretty inconsistent at times, but even his bad nights, he's still giving you 18 points. D'Lo and Reeves on a bad night, you're lucky for them to crack even 10 points, and there's times where they're literally unplayable. You never really have that question with, like, a Levine. Never really have that question with a DeMar DeRozan, right? So you'd have that consistency in that end, that allows now Reeves, instead of being the third option, now he's the fourth option. And when he has it going on any given night, he can be the third or the second or third option, right? Especially with LeBron so willing to kind of like defer to him and let him go and cook. Right? So now you have Reeves, when, but it also offsets his bad night. So when he doesn't have it on a night, we're not relying, so relying on him that we lose. You know, same thing with like a Christian Wood. If Christian Wood has a better night then great, then we're probably winning those nights. But now we don't have to be so reliant on him or D'Lo or Rui or whoever we end up with after we make a trade, right? Like now we have a better balance. And again, you have the better pecking order, similar to when Jared Vanderbilt and Cam Reddish and stuff like that come back. Because on the defensive side, now you're going to have that drop off, right? So right now, Without Cam Reddish and without Jared Vanderbilt, you have Max Christie, a 20-year-old second-year player who wasn't even in the rotation, having to defend the best player every night. It's either him or it's Torian Prince, right? Now, you get Reddish back. Well, now Reddish gets to defend the best player, right? And then Prince, second, so on and so forth. Well, when you get Vando back, now your best on-ball defender who this thus far this season and uh, Cam Reddish, he gets to move to the second best player, and Jared Vanderbilt now defends the first best player, which means now D'Lo, instead of him defending the second or third best player, now gets to defend the third or fourth best player, and so on and so forth, and now you go down that pecking order, right? So if you can get a guy, like let's say you could swap a D'Lo 
with a Zach Levine in the starting unit. Yeah, Zach Levine isn't a great defensive guy, but he's also not going to have to defend one of the better players on any given night. He's going to end up defending the fourth best player on the other team. But now you have enough offense in that starting unit consistently to where you could go like a, a Cam Reddish and a Jared Vanderbilt, tell them, hey, if you hit the open shot when you can, but we need you to just lock down defensively. So now you have those two locking down defensively. Anthony Davis doesn't have to do so much offensively, so he can lock down defensively. Now you're the best defensive team in the league, and you got Anthony Davis, uh, Zach Levine, and LeBron James to handle the offensive workload to start the game, and you have enough defense to control and contend against the other team, and now you're, you're much better off. Same thing with like a DeMar DeRozan, whomever, right? Like, again, neither of these guys are great defensive guys, but they're not much worse than D'Lo. And on top of that, they're more consistent offensively. So they can be and go and create their own shot and get going to where now you kind of offset that. Now you have the defense. And then whatever Cam Reddish and Vando provide on the offensive side is just, it, that's just icing on the cake. The Lakers desperately need a third guy, a consistent third guy. Even if it's not Zach Levine, even if it's not, you know, uh, 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 DeMar DeRozan, right? It could be, you know, give me a guy that can guarantee me 15 to 20 points a night, right? Pick that guy, whoever that is, right? Or get me like a two-way guy, like even like a somebody like a Spencer Dinwiddie, I think would be helpful because we'd be better defensively and he could go give you 15 to 20 on any given night, right? But we need somebody that can consistently handle the workload. DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine are the two guys that are most likely to be a Laker this year and make the most sense and I think are actually obtainable for the Lakers. Either one of these guys I'd be all for. I mean, there's an argument to be made for either, for both of them. And Zach Levine gives you a little more a um, little more uh, like dynamic playing over like a DeMar DeRozan, but either guy would do wonders for this Lakers team. We need a trade. We need to stop being so LeBron and AD reliant. Right? Like you see, yes, like you look at a team like the Sixers. They have that Tyrese Maxey. They have that Anthony Davis. But... They also have those other guys that pick it up. They have that consistent third guy in Tobias Harris who goes and gives them 15 to 20 on a regular basis. And then that allow, takes pressure off everybody else and then they get to go and do their thing. Also, you have Tyrese Maxey who, is, who can go and create and get going offensively by himself. Right? Like D'Lo, again, when he's on, he's on. When D'Lo's on, he's tough. Right? Because he, he can go give you, you know, 25 points and 9 assists. But he can't do that on a regular basis. A Zach Levine and a DeMar DeRozan can, which then takes a ton of pressure off of LeBron James and Anthony Davis. We're going to end up wearing these two down and still losing. The Lakers need a trade. I know a lot of people feel like they don't. And look, I, I, if they don't, I'm not going to be like, oh, that's it, season's lost. Like I still believe this team can figure it out. And when I still believe this team has enough if they figure it out, to win, but we're going to need a lot. We're going to have to continue to ride LeBron James and Anthony Davis heavily. We're still going to have our issues and our concerns. There's still going to be problems there. There's still going to be holes. And my thing is, if you can upgrade that, then yes, do it, right? Like, I still believe and would not be shocked at all if, again, if the Lakers figure it out, if they're hoisting the Larry O'Brien trophy at the end of the year, I'm not saying all hope is lost, the Lakers are terrible, and that's it. I mean, they're not a contending team at the moment. But again, once everybody comes back, once everybody kind of gets back to their position, once everybody kind of figures out their role and has an understanding, I could see this team being better. And maybe they do look like a contender. But they still need that consistent third guy. Maybe come playoff time, maybe Reeves steps up and he becomes that guy. Right? And then you're fine. But thus far throughout the season, the Lakers have not had that consistent third guy. They have not had that guy that on a nightly basis steps up big. Where you look at all the other teams, they all have it. All the other teams have those guys, have that third guy. They have their two guys. They have their two guys that they lean on on a regular basis, but they have their third guy 
who game in and game out can go and give you that production. And the Lakers need the same thing. The Lakers need that third guy. We don't have that consistent third guy. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. How do you feel? What are your thoughts are? Do you agree with me? Um, do you disagree with me? Do you think, no, they still don't need a trade? Do you think, like, no, they definitely need a trade? Again, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me know you enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate you all. See you in the next one.